right, for this week's clinical file, we have Ben, and Ben presents with a long-standing history of pulmonary fibrosis and difficulty taking a full, unrestricted breath of air. During joint mobility testing of the upper ribs, the costovertebral joints are stuck into a position of inspiration. Which of the following is the most effective to improve the patient's expiration. So we have A, inferior glide of the costovertebral joint, B, posterior glide of the costovertebral joint, C, superior glide of the costovertebral joints, and D is anterior glide of the costovertebral joints. Now you can see in this question right here, you're definitely musculoskeletal going into that mobilization department where I know a lot of students struggle here really understanding the whole concave, convex, how do I mobilize type deal. So we're going to take this one nice and slow. Uh, this may be one you want to catch on YouTube as well to get a better, just like visual. I'll try to draw out as best as I can uh, some of these different aspects. All right. So let's start off at the top of the question. We have Ben presents with a long standing history of pulmonary fibrosis. I'm going to stop there, even though it's not the end, uh, end of that sentence. So we got a person with pulmonary fibrosis. The one thing I know about this one is that the patient is having a condition where the lung tissue is being scarred down. And this can happen for different reasons, but that tissue becomes very scar-like or scarred down, and then it's not able to expand very well, all right? And so it says the patient has a long-standing history of pulmonary fibrosis and difficulty taking a full unrestricted breath of air, which makes a lot of sense to me. Remember, scar down of the lung tissue, not able to expand very well, so the person is not able to inhale very well, all right? Let's continue down the question. It says, during joint mobility testing of the upper ribs, the costovertebral joints are stuck into a position of inspiration. And so I'm like, hmm, okay, okay. So let's take a look at this one. During joint mobility testing, the upper ribs which we know are ribs one through six, and I'll put that note out here to the side, ribs one through six, and we know we have 12 ribs in total. So the upper ribs, one through six, we're testing the joint mobility. We find that the costovertebral joints are stuck into a position of inspiration. I think that that's very important because in this question, I was expecting them to say maybe they were stuck into a position of uh, expiration, but no, they're stuck into a position of inspiration y'all so as we go down to the final part of this question it says which of the following is the most effective to improve the patient's expiration we're trying to get them into an expired position of the lungs expired position of the joints right so before i go and start dissecting this question i want to read out the answer choices again for everyone on the podcast so we got a inferior glide of the costovertebral joints b posterior glide of the costovertebral joints c superior glide of the costovertebral joints and d is the anterior glide of the costovertebral joints so which joints are we talking about costovertebral joints what position is the patient stuck into inspiration okay so there's a little bit of anatomy and biomechanics that we need to go over first, and then we can dissect this question and get down to the answer. Is that cool? Okay. So when you're talking about the upper ribs, we're talking about one through six, you need to know the basic motion of those ribs. And that is more what they call like a pump handle motion. You know, if you go to the gas station, right? Um, you go to the gas station and pumping gas and all that good stuff. And, and you go and you pull the handle. Well, that, that, motion of pulling up the handle that's where they get the whole pump handle idea from all right and i'm going to go ahead and draw this like i said um if you're on the podcast right now you may want to just check me out on youtube so you can watch this video a little bit but um let's just imagine right now that you're at a gas station and you have that pump handle right and the pump handle you know that when you um, pull on it, it's going to go into more of a superior direction. Can you visualize that for a second? Like you're starting the pump gas, you pull on it, you tug on it, it goes into a superior direction. Well, they say that those upper ribs, when you inspire, it's kind of like an, a pump handle motion. 
Okay, so when you inspire, it does a what role do you think? What type of role? It should be doing a superior role. All right, so we say that a patient who is inspiring, or you and I, when we inspire, our ribs do a superior role. Now, my question to you is, what type of glide do you think we do? Oh, you may be asking the question of, wait, hold on, I got to know what uh, type of joint is this? Is this convex moving on concave or concave moving on convex? That's very important to know. Well, let me tell you, the ribs are convex and they're going to move on a concave vertebral body. All right. So it's convex on concave. What does that mean from a biomechanics perspective? That as we do a superior roll, we will get a what? Inferior glide. Because the rolling glide are in opposite directions when we have convex on concave. You may need to slow me down, baby. You may need to pause me and put this down in your notes right now. I'll go over it again. Superior roll, inferior gl glide is what occurs when a person's doing inspiration. The exact opposite is what's going to occur when somebody's doing expiration. Is that cool? Okay. The question says, which of the following is the most effective to improve the patient's expiration? Right now, our patient is stuck into a superior role, inferior glide position. So I need an intervention that's going to help me do an inferior role, superior glide. That's what I need. All right. And so let's look down at our answer choices. A says inferior glide to the cost of a T-rule joint. Is that the correct answer? Hmm. Well, when I think about it, I'm like, probably not. You want to know why? Because if I do an inferior glide, it's going to help me get a superior role. All right. If we do a superior role, is that inspiration or expiration? You should be saying inspiration. So A can't be the correct answer. Why? Because the inferior glide of the costovertebral joints are going to help with inspiration, not expiration. And remember, the question's asking me to improve the patient's expiration. Let's go to B. Posterior glide of the costovertebral joints. Hmm. Well, if I do a posterior glide here, it's not going to help me with inspiration or expiration. Remember, there's only two glides that are really going to help with this motion of inspiration and expiration, and that's inferior or a superior glide. Posterior or anterior, mm -mm, it's not really going to help me with inspiration or expiration in these upper ribs. So guess what? I'm going to go ahead and get rid of B. Doesn't work for me. It's not going to help. Let's look at C. C says superior glide of the costovertebral joints. Well, if I do a superior glide of that joint, what is the roll going to do? It's going to do the opposite, inferior roll. Oh, well, guess what? Does a superior glide help with inspiration or expiration? You should be saying 100%. It helps with expiration. You know what? I'm going to put a big check mark next to this answer. You want to know why? Because that's exactly what the question's asking for. It says, which of the following is the most effective to improve the patient's expiration? A superior glide, baby, all freaking day long. Let's get it. Let's look at D, our final answer here. D says anterior glide of the cost of a T-rule joint. And we just spoke about this not too long ago, right? How the posterior and anterior glide isn't going to help me with inspiration and expiration of the upper ribs, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and eliminate that one out just the way I eliminated B. And this is going to leave us with our final answer of C as in cat, superior glide of the cost of a T rule joint. There you go. All right, so for those of you who got this one correct, congratulations. Um, you know, I really want to just do a quick recap. That way, if you are taking notes, if you you, have, you found your way to the clinic <laughs> or, or if you got yourself off the treadmill, you're able to write these notes down. All right. So let's go over them real quick. When we're talking about the cost of vertebral joints and we're talking about the upper ribs, we're talking about ribs one through six. Cool. All right. The cost of vertebral joints are going to be a convex 
moving on a concave. If you ever have convex bones moving on concave bones, you know that the motion for the rolling glide is going to be opposite, meaning that as the roll goes up, the glide must go down. Vice versa, if the roll goes down, the glide must go up. You see that opposite motion there with roll and glide, right? Okay. Now, again, we're talking about the upper ribs in this case, ribs one through six. All right. If we have a patient that is stuck into inspiration, what, it, what are they stuck into as far as their roll and glide? What position are they roll and glide if they're stuck into inspiration? You should be saying they're stuck into a superior roll stuck into an inferior glide. Okay, so if your question says that you wanna improve expiration, you wanna help the patient expire, then that must mean we need to do an inferior roll and a what glide? Superior glide. And that's the reason why C was the right answer here, the superior glide of the costovertebral joint. Why? Because it is going to help the patient with expiration. Bada boom. Now I'm telling you one thing, if you want to be ready for the NPTE coming up, you have to make sure that you understand your biomechanics. You can use your Donald Newman uh, kinesiology textbook, kind of go through there and really learn the concave convex and how all the joints move from the, from the top of the head all the way down to the toes. You can really understand each piece of it. And I definitely recommend that. Because these are very common types of questions to show up, not just from uh, an examination perspective, but from a mobilization and intervention perspective.